Um, well, it looks like it's four o'clock, so let's get this uh, party going here. And I will call the Town of Atherton City Council special meeting uh, study session September 1, 2021 to order. Um, Anthony, may we have the roll call, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Council members Hawkins? Aye. Agolio? Yes. Widmer? Yep. Vice Mayor Lempris? Here. And Mayor Lewis? I'm here. So we have all members accounted for um, at this time. Uh, Anthony, would you like to explain how any member of the public may uh, make a public comment at this time? I certainly would. I see we have a few members of the public that have all joined the uh, um, Zoom link. So if you'd like to make a public comment, uh, you can do so at this point and you can click the participants button at the bottom of your screen uh, and that will select raise hand and then myself or the mayor will call on you to make a comment. The, the mayor will also likely open up most of the items for public comment um, at a point and at this stage I don't see anybody looking to make a public comment so we can probably move on. Okay, great. I'll um, move on to our next item, number three, which is the approval of the many minutes <laughs> that we had uh, piled up. And um, does any member of the council have any comments on any of the minutes that had been submitted? I, I do. Just that, just that they're a little late. <laughs> I know. Well, yes. And in rereading them, uh, it was brought to my attention that I, as mayor, uh, early on, in, on May 19th, had uh, said I was forming an ad hoc landscape sub ad hoc committee and that I was appointing myself, of course, um, and I didn't appoint anybody else. And so at this point, uh, I would like to uh, appoint um, Councilmember DeGoya, if he would like to work with me on the landscaping um, committee, just in reviewing as we talked about that in May. All right. Yes, okay. would you uh, be able to do that? How will it be to work with you? Wonderful, <laughs> it, it, a, okay. a pleasure, I'm sure, because okay. you always get your way when we work together. I don't think so. <laughs> So. Like I could say the same thing on committees that I'm working with you on, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, it's been several months and I think there's, you know, water has gone under the bridge or over the bridge. And so we may be uh, a little late. Look at Mr. Rodericks. He looks like a bobblehead. Uh-huh. He's going, <laughs> it's too late. And that's why he never brought it up to me again. He knew. <laughs> Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway. There, there are there are certainly opportunities for input along the way, but uh, complete overhauls are probably too too late. I don't yet. think we indicated any complete yeah. overhaul. Yeah. I understand. Not at all. Okay, so with that, um, I'm also going to open it up to the members of the public. If any member of the public had any comments on the um, numerous um, minutes from May 19th. June 2nd, June 16th, and July 7th um, to make a comment or on, um, if not, I'll bring it back to uh, the council for a motion to approve. So move. Okay. Thank you. Second. Did I see Vice Mayor? I'm happy to, I thought uh, I heard Rick say second, but I'm happy to, oh, whatever, I didn't. whatever you'd like. Sorry. I'll <laughs> let- uh, I, I'm indifferent you. also. Okay, <laughs> right, thank you. All, the, all those in favor? I'll do uh, the, right. the quick roll call. I think you have to do a roll. Oh. <laughs> yeah, my apologies. Uh, Councilmember Hawkins? Aye. Agolio? Yes. Widmer? Yep. Vice Mayor Lempris? Aye. And Mayor Lewis? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Going on to item number four review designs for donor wall and provide staff with direction regarding selected options. Um, City Manager, you want to kick this off? I do. Uh, we also have WRS on the line as well. I think Jenny's on the line to make the presentation, but I'll, when it comes to that part, I will share my screen for it. Uh, but as far as uh, introduction, the subcommittee of Mayor Lewis and Councilmember Hawkins Benwellian met with WRNS to go through several design options. They narrowed that down to, a, to two uh, design option types uh, of display of the donor wall. Uh, the categories all remain the same consistent with the council direction uh, and some of the verbiage around the outside of the wall was also uh, amended as part of that uh, and then there were materials selected 
uh, as potential materials for that donor wall. Uh, and I had samples in my office and I think the majority of you came through and took a look at those materials and may have some comments on them. Uh, one is stone, uh, an option for stone, and then the other options are black and steel or black uh, aluminum uh, material on the back with raised lettering in bronze. They of course vary in pricing uh, and timing. Uh, the stone, uh, we would need to find a vendor to do that. The sign vendor for the project may not be able to do the stone. So that would be a little trickier to get done in a timely fashion. But the aluminum or the black and steel as a particular sign vendor could, could do that under the project guidelines. So I'm not gonna go into that much more detail other than that, I'm going to let uh, Jenny uh, take the presentation and I'll bring it up on the screen and she can walk the council through that. And of course, the subcommittee can comment as we go along as well. So let me bring that up just a moment, Jenny. Make this a little bigger. There we go. Here's the first one. All right, Jenny, you're on. Uh, Jenny, we can't hear you. You may have to take your headset off or plug it in again. George, can you make your screen bigger? Uh, yes. Just doesn't seem. Is it there, I think I can hear you now, Jenny. It's Did it work? Of, yeah. Uh -huh. okay. okay, perfect. Yes. <laughs> Technical difficulty here. Of course. Um, all right, so, okay. So today we'll look at um, two design options and we'll walk through the different materials and how the donor sort of tiers are organized. Um, so we've uh, reviewed these uh, options a couple of times. Um, and I believe John and Pauline should join us shortly. Um, as she, there might be, if there are any architectural related questions, um, they can answer a little bit better than I do. Um, um, so uh, without further ado, let's move forward with the um, package. Okay, so we all know the locations. Um, this would be in the main lobby, um, kind of that donor wall in, where the George's um, mouse is, um, that location. And um, we have that arch wall that's existing. Uh, and so we're looking at uh, the materials that would clad um, onto that wall and um, a different way to kind of uh, organize the donors um, with the different um, kind of layouts and tiers and um, uh, materials as George touched on earlier. Um, I believe also the carpet is, has been removed um, uh, and the chairs are kind of in flux right now. Um, so right now we're looking at this location um, and potentially removing the, um, the lounge chairs there to allow more presence for the donor recognition walls here. Um, and okay, so the next sheet uh, shows the option one. Um, this location or this uh, design option um, is kind of like that reference image on the left um, using the stone uh, tile. We're thinking either dark slate or maybe granite um, and so sort of creating that um, sort of stone natural material um, that kind of uh, complements with the architectural finish. Um, uh, just to touch on uh, kind of uh, the uh, architectural materials. Uh, there's a lot of bronze that's been used, uh, black and sort of steel or kind of the black uh, metal finish that's used in the mullions uh, and the railing as well. So we definitely drew a lot of uh, materiality from architecture um, to kind of incorporate into the donor walls to make sure that everything kind of complement um, with each other. So for this design option, we're thinking this dark um, slate um, stone material, um, they will be consist of one foot by four feet tile, um, kind of uh, staggered a little bit uh, to create a little bit of pattern and uh, with that dimensional exactly. And um, that dimensional letter form uh, will come into uh, for the donor names <clears throat> and how they're organized would be from the very top to the bottom, um, starting with 1 million, we had about three, uh, uh, three donors um, and then 100,000 for the next one. And the text kind of goes smaller as you get uh, to the lower amount of uh, donor do uh, donation um, and 50,000, 10,000, et cetera. Um, so 
they kind of organize in in a way and um, kind of or, uh, by tiers and the separate by a little bit of gap uh, by the different categories. Um, so the 150 uh, names on the bottom uh, that right currently, uh, I don't know how many we have, George, but um, if we are planning that this might grow in the future. So in the day one, it might be uh, maybe half of the name or something, or um, and that could be added in the future. Um, so uh, the way that these letters will be fabricated, um, it would be sort of cut out uh, using Romark material, which is a very common uh, material used for signage um, to look like bronze, the polished bronze. Um, and that could be applied on site. So it's very flexible to add the names in the future if we need to. Um, one uh, benefit to touch on is that this layout here is more structured, um, kind of more grid-like. Um, if we kind of like that more um, line structure um, look, this is um, that um, aesthetic. Um, and then on the top here, we have the over the arch, um, the uh, title for the donor, um, just a little bit of a, a explanation of what this wall is about. Um, so we kept the language uh, kind of very um, general and kind of including everyone, including the taxpayers as part of here, um, a, a general kind of introduction for to encompass the whole donation. Uh, any questions uh, so far? Should we wait uh, to open it up to the public until we are finished or shall we sure. take? Yes. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Um, so, mm -hmm. okay. So mm -hmm. the next, uh, she just shows um, kind of a rendering of how it looks like in the lobby. Um, and so again, you'll see kind of the dark, the railing on the top left and then the mullions on the right at the entry door and the lighting um, has that sort of black uh, um, metal finish. And so it'll tie everything um, up very uh, well. Okay, then option two, uh, we have a few different material options here, uh, but touching on the layout and how the tiers are organized are a little bit more flexible thinking about how um, the donor names might come later on in the future if we need to add. Um, this option would allow a little bit more flexibility um, because the layout is kind of organized from still from the top to bottom uh, from the most amount the 1 million and then 100,000, and then 50,000, then 10,000, and then et cetera. Um, and they, they, the way they would be added would be a little bit more organic. And so um, in the future, if we need to add uh, names, uh, it could, it's very flexible to um, have that space to accommodate uh, the future uh, donor names. Uh, then the title is the same as the one before that we had. Um, so this would be a dark bronze letters that's applied over the archway. Um, the three different material option comes in the back wall um, and we're looking, we have some uh, sort of rough numbers with the sign fabricator as well. They're pretty close within a few thousands. And um, I think it's really depending on the aesthetic that we like, um, but the three different material options are the option one is the painted aluminum panel. So this would uh, be a little bit more uniform and finish um, the aluminum panel that would apply. Um, so the they'll um, have kind of a vertical seam um, in the middle and then two on the side. Um, and this will be true for, uh, for all three um, metal panels. Um, so that's the first uh, material option uh, to look like dark bronze. And then the second option would be black and steel. Um, during the review session before um, there was a consensus on uh, the preference of more natural patina finish. So this one um, we believe will give the most natural and kind of uh, aesthetic uh, with the, that uh, patina over time uh, with the black and steel panel, kind of like the reference image on the bottom left. And then the third option would be a cam metal that we uh, this option came out when we uh, talked to the sign fabricator uh, as an alternate way to uh, maybe have the material uh, still showing that dark bronze, but um, in a different different way to express it. 
Um, so there's, I believe there are two samples that was uh, sent, um, but yeah. Uh, so that was the, so all three has that dark metal finish, uh, either dark bronze or the black and steel to mimic that sort of aesthetic. And then the, again, the letters would be applied uh, with the row mark letters uh, cutouts. So again, they can be laid out on site in the future as well. Jenny, uh, the, the material selection for the backing of the donor wall, that's mix and match, right? So you could do the organic pattern with stone, or you could do the organized pattern with the metal. Correct. I think we can do, uh, like, let's say if we like the structured um, layout of the first one, um, we would probably do kind of the backing. So we still have the seam. Uh, we would look at the layout a little bit, um, but we can look at kind of that structure layout with the this material here. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think the so rendering, yeah, the kind of in the space, what it looks like. Okay, yeah, that's it. So um, that's is that the end of your presentation, Jenny? Uh, yes. Uh, we have a material board. Is yes. Do you think that's uh, what sharing, George? Yeah. Okay. So John put together um, a quick um, uh, sheet for all the materials of what we are using in the space um, mm -hmm. around, and then uh, what's inside of the dash line or what we're proposing for the donor wall uh, materials. And what you see the John Smith, that's a mock-up that the sign fabricator provided with the roll mark material uh, with the cutout letters. Uh, so that would be applied onto either the black and steel or the dark stone tile, um, of the three larger panels on the, on the back there. So those are the steel, and I think that's that shows. Right. The, uh, no, that's just the, yeah. Steel. The, the number one it looks like the the, the, stone, the stone, and then two and three are the are the black and steel. Yeah, like. correct. So yeah, number one is the stone. Two is I believe the uh, George. If you could flip to the second sure. page, yeah, the that's the um, can metal the one in the middle. And then the third one on the right is the black and steel. Okay. So those that came through and looked at the material in my office, the, right. the larger one was the black and steel. Uh, the shiny one is the chem metal satin black material, which I don't think the ones that people that looked at it liked the shiny one. They liked the, the non-shiny smaller one. But we don't have a sample for the polished bronze. Um, oh, I'll... that's the letters. Those are the letters. For right. the letters, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. The honed black slate you have. You have a honed black slate sample? Okay, that's number one. Okay. Yeah. And, do you, and do you have the uh, Chemtech, Chem Metal? The Chem Metal was this one? That's number two. And then do you have the black and steel also? That's three. Yep. Okay. Which one are you saying is the shiny one, George? The shiny one, it says chem metal too, Jenny. Mm -hmm. John, when you sent them, if you recall. The 624. I have one. Uh, 908. 908. Oh, that's a different one. Uh, it should yeah, be that, 624. That one. that one, George, is just a satin black aluminum and um, that matches the door frames yeah I, I provided that just to give a, a sense okay. of what you know what your curtain wall framing and storefront so framing. nobody like that for the wall so that's good <laughs> okay. yeah so, so yeah, it's the mullions and things it's okay yeah bill is it, yeah is there um a substantial cost and the, and and delivery difference between the th the three good question um, so in delivery and installation, they're pretty much the same. Uh, Cost-wise, uh, we're talking about maybe two to three thousand dollar difference between the three. Uh, the cheapest is actually the black and steel, uh, the patina, the natural patina finish, yeah. and then uh, next one is the uh, painted aluminum. Then the last one is the cam metal. Is the most expensive. Okay. And, and how do they compare to the cost of the of the slate? 
So the slate one, I think it's a, that's the one that has a little bit more wild card since the sign fabricator uh, don't handle stone installation. That's something we'll have to probably contact either the um, SGA, uh, the contractor. Um, I'm not sure, um, George, if you know the process, but yeah. There's a bigger, longer process uh, yeah. for stone because it's a little more expensive and uh, mm -hmm. SGA would have to find a sub to do that. Um, we have a sign sub. The sign sub could do the the other materials, but but you but you don't know. You can't make a guess. Or Jay um, Amoroso couldn't make a guess as to to how long it would take to potentially you know based on their experience to get to get that material in and get it installed. The stone. Do, yeah. Do you want me to take a guess at it? Yeah, Would sure, Polly. I think, Bill, with the, the construction climate these days, it's probably uh, twice as long, if not more, um, mm. to procure that material. And I, I think it is um, more than just 10% more expensive. It's probably 30 to 60% more expensive. Okay. All right. Thanks, Paul. Okay. Um, so did any other council member have a question at this point uh, for Jenny or Pauline about uh, the materials? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Um, in the image where you showed the, the uh, finished uh, product on the wall, I think, yeah, not the, the image after this. The rendering? Morning. Yeah. What is that tapestry? Is that just a space holder or is that something that's planned to go there? That's just, it's been there on the illustrations. We don't have that, Rick. Okay, I just wondered. Yeah. You, okay. could, put the, you could put the uh, logo, town logo up there. You know, it's a big piece. Yeah, yeah. we, we yeah. can't afford the tapestry. But I, I just wondered what that was, okay. But you've got one at your house, Bill, that we were gonna borrow for a while, don't you? That's okay, yes, no problem, no problem. <laughs> Okay. Um, um, okay. So we kind of understand the the, the difference that oh. material could be used in either of the design layouts. So maybe we should um, talk about get some input from council about design layouts uh, preferences. Bill, you have your hand up, waving. Yeah. Right? So. Um... I, yeah, I've got a couple of three comments. Uh, really, I, I like the structured one, which is what you have on the screen right now. Uh, I think it just looks cleaner and it looks better. Um, the wording above, I'm, I'm not going to change the content of the wording above, but I, rec I would rec recommend that we consider putting donors before taxpayers, because actually the donors really came before the taxpayers. And um, I, I, I heard during the conversation and also when I had my meeting with George, oh, well, if we do this and we do that, we'll have room to add another names. Well, we're, these are the donors who got this project done. So there is a, a finite period of time when the donors will have donated and then that's it. It's not going to be like, you know, next year somebody wants to give us some money. And at least that's my understanding. I, I, I don't know if we, we had this ongoing donation thing. It was like, hey, you know, that's why we sent the letter out. We're donating. We're going to get your name on the wall and you need to respond now if you want it. That's what the letter said. It didn't say, you know, next year, two years from now, and we'll put your name on the wall. So I think there should be a finite period of time. Those are my three comments. Thank you. Oh, oh, and the material. I'd prefer the stone, um, but I understand, you know, there's a cost issue. So I'm willing to go along with the majority of the council on, the, on that. I like the raised lettering, the raised bronze lettering, but that's it. Thanks. Faux, faux, faux bronze lettering. Yeah. It's not, yeah, yeah. Okay, Mr. DeGoya, your turn. Uh, okay, I I think that the um, bronze, dark bronze lettering that um, WRNS has recommended is is very good. I like it going outside of the 
um, defined space for where the donors' names are. Uh, I think the language is good. I don't agree with Bill about the ta taxpayers have paid a lot more money for this than the donors, and I'd leave it the way it is. Uh, but but I like it. Uh, in terms of the uh, structured versus unstructured, I think the structured is far better. I, I, it just looks better to the eye. The other one looks like chaos to me. Uh, uh, with respect to, uh, there, there are two comments I have with the names. I, I agree with what Bill said. I, 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 I don't think we should be planning on adding names. Uh, I mean, maybe if somebody comes in in the next, sometime this year, uh, we would add them. Uh, I, I would be most influenced if somebody came in with a big donation. Uh, but uh, I don't think we should be planning on adding names into the future. I, I think that's unnecessary. It, I mean, th this isn't like the hospital where we're continually fundraising for this project. So uh, I think we sh should plan on this being the way it is. And um, I, I also thought when I looked at this, there, there's a large amount of space for that other category. And, and I wonder if, as long as it's readable, we could make those, you know, the, the, the large category at the bottom, the name smaller so we could add another column or two. And maybe that would enable us to make some of the other names slightly larger, but in general, that that large group at the bottom takes up more than half the space, which I think is more than is warranted. So yeah. I would recommend making those letters a little smaller and adding a column or two. And then, fin yeah. then finally, uh, you know, when I thought about this, I, we, we didn't set a limit, but there has to be some reasonable limit on if somebody gave $10, are they going to be on? put on the donor wall or, or you know, $5 are they gonna be put on the donor wall? That just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, and I know we haven't discussed that. So- I don't think that there are any like that. I think the minimum one from what I've heard from Atherton now is, is 100. Okay, well, if that's true, then, got then, 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 I, then I, the comment's not a big deal. Do we know that for sure? I, I don't know that for sure. <laughs> Well, that's what Sandy has told me. And unless George has gotten gotten some other donations based on our letter, Sandy has told me that there was there are no donations that are less than a hundred. Well, I, I guess I would say that more uh, more than Ather to now, I'd just say if somebody makes a donation directly to the town for less than a hundred dollars, they shouldn't go on this wall. Right. Our, okay. our uh, lowest donation thus far has been five hundred. Okay. Well, that's even better. I'd be comfortable setting that as the minimum. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Um, may I ask uh, Vice Mayor if he has any comments about this? Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, Elizabeth. Let, I just oh, wanted. You to, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to comment on the materials. Oh, of course. For, I'm sorry. For me, when I when I looked at the three materials in George's office, they didn't look dramatically different to me. So based on that, you know, I. I, I agree with Bill. I, I would opt for the stone, but given the cost and the timing, I, I would not. I would opt for one of the metals. And if they pretty much look the same, I'd go for whatever is the least expensive. If it's if it's a significant cost difference. Okay. Okay. Vice Mayor. Sure. Thank you. Um, a lot of, I think, similar comments, couple, couple of different, and, and a, a question. Um, as to, I, I was surprised about the adding names too. I'll mention that. And my first thought wasn't so much, um, you know, logistics of people adding names in a year. It was more like it, it, the list could look strange if we're planning on adding names and we save space for it and, and the names don't come or something like that. I'd, I'd, I'd rather we just set a date and, and those names are, are the fixed universe and then we know how to design to it and all of that. Um, that's one. Uh, my second comment is, um, or a question, which is, are, are we acknowledging Atherton now and their contributions somewhere separately, or is there, are they going to be on this or what are we doing for that? As a, as a body, I don't think there's been any recognition separately for them. 
Okay, I mean, I, I just think it'd be a, a good thing to do to recognize Atherton now in some way, it, because, you know, without them, this, none of these names, very few of these names would have been here. They, you had a bunch of residents who got together, who volunteered time, put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, I, I think they should be acknowledged in some way. And I don't have any specific thought in mind about how that'd be done, but would love to hear other council members' thoughts about that. Um, and continuing on, um, with regard to the overarching statement, um, I don't really care about the order of taxpayers and, and donors to Matthew, but, but there's something that uh, sort of runs me the wrong way about the town of Atherton gratefully acknowledging our taxpayers because I see taxpayers as, and residents as synonymous, and I think the town and the residents are, are not separate entities, really. I don't know who the town is if we have it separate from our residents. Um, and, and so I would like to wordsmith that a little bit because it just seems awkward to me that, that if by the town we mean our professional staff and council, I don't think that's an appropriate thing. So I, there's something in that that just rubs me the wrong way. Although I, I think the sentiment is a good one. So I'm not saying that, I'm just saying that the actual words, the way they're phrased and the distinction between the town and taxpayers in particular is one that um, okay. Which design? Which design do you like the best? Um, I, other people have expressed preference for the order, the structured. Um, I actually could go either way on, on that. I'm fine with it going at the structured if, if that's where the rest of the council goes. Um, and, and in terms of materials, I would just like to see us stay away from the stone just because of the uncertainty of time and cost. Okay, anything else? Uh, no, but I would like to hear people's thoughts on, particularly on the after now issue. Okay, so. well, let's um, hear um, from uh, Councilwoman Hawkins Manwelli, and she was on the donor um, uh, ad hoc committee. So um, let's let's hear what you have to say about the final two uh, candidates here. Well, I agree with what everyone had to say about the materials. I would have preferred stone, but uh, I don't, when looking at the samples, I agree that it wasn't that big a difference that merits the extra expense and uncertainty. So I would go with one of the metals. Um, do you mind putting up the other one with the more random design, but the next picture? The reason why this one was put up here is that there was a lot of um, talk about the amounts that are being donated and we've arbitrarily made categories and by what rick was saying um there's real that that last category sounds like it can be from 500 to 10,000, which is a very big jump so we wrestled around and this was an approach that allowed us to have less emphasis and less you know so it's a little more abstract in terms of how much people donated so that's why this was put on there and in terms of giving recognition to Atherton now, I think that's a great idea. And we can just list them as another name up there uh, is how I would handle that. And on the wording, um, I kept wanting to hear, see generous donors. So mm -hmm. Atherton gratefully acknowledges our taxpayers and generous donors. So take the town of, and maybe that might help with what uh, Mike was saying about the town of Atherton calling it and it also takes one, two, three words to say that. So you can just say Atherton gratefully acknowledges our taxpayers and generous donors. And uh, so I am kind of torn between the two designs. I slightly like this one more. And I had predicted that all you guys would like the structured one, which is what happened. But um, I like them both. So I can go with which, whichever people think. It sounds like there's more consensus than I thought there would be. So. Okay, anything else at this point? So uh, my comments are uh, pretty much in line with everyone else's. Um, uh, I, I prefer the, um, the structured uh, grid with a running bond uh, texture in the background and not the solid sheet uh, uh, metal, if you will, you know, the large expanse, what, because that's not what you really see happening here. Although Jenny did mention that with the stone um, uh, pieces, 
it was like staggered. So it's it's a you can sort of see it in the uh, that piece over to the left. You can see how it's staggered. It's called a running bond, and that gives the background a little bit of life. And so uh, I like that with the um, with this structured. The reason I like the structured is because it does uh, give uh, the three $1 million donors equal uh, uh, footing on the, on the same uh, level plane, which the cloud uh, scattered does not. There's one $1 million donor uh, kind of at the top, another in the middle, and one over on the other side. So they're not on equal footing. And this way, all three one millions are uh, completely um, uh, equal. I have a hard time telling from the these renderings the differential in the size of the um, typeface for the large donors and then the next tier, and then the next tier. You, you can start to, but they're too close together. And I agree that with the so many of the um, last tier, and, I, and we don't know how they are going to be structured, uh, I, I assume that those names are going to be in alphabetical order. Uh, because they're in one category. We're not gradiating them according to their $9,999 uh, gift down to your $500 gift at the, at the very bottom. So uh, to organize, and we haven't talked about how those names would be um, organized. And I, I think this gives people a, a better opportunity to be able to find their name. And when they're bringing their little grandkids in and you say, see, there's your grandma, you know, we uh, donated this in honor of uh, the Children's Trust or this way, and you can easily point to it. But again, I think that the size of the letters in this uh, gradation needs to be at least, it, it needs to be more exaggerated. Uh, for the uh, top tiers. Um, the, the wording around the outside, I agree, we need to wordsmith that. I've never felt really comfortable about how we're doing the town of Atherton Great acknowledges. I think acknowledges is um, kind of an awkward word and uh, we're, we're, you know, the generous, we're um, commemorating them, we, you know, their generous uh, donations of the, the donors. I think uh, somebody said that, um, you know, to somewhere acknowledge the Atherton now, I, I, I the Atherton now donors, but um, we could say Atherton now donors. Um, it, would that be in this environment or would it be as a special uh, insert in the um, grid here, you know, as part of the uh, maybe the second tier of the, you know, Atherton now um, fundraising group. So that, that we need to discuss that and come up with something uh, that works for everybody. I think, uh, Diana, your um, <laughs> suggestion of getting rid of the town of, you just say Atherton gratefully, um, I don't know another word for acknowledges, uh, the generous donations of our uh, Atherton now donors and taxpayers or generous generousness. Well, taxpayers aren't doing it because they're generous. That's true. Well, oh, our okay. taxpayers and generous donors. So put the generous in front of donors. Generous donors and taxpayers, I think is great. That, that sounds good to me, Bill. It does yeah. too, yeah. Um, I'd like, when you're done- Another you word for the, acknowledges, excuse me. You could use recognizes instead of acknowledges if you want, they're basically the same thing. How about thanks? Thanks is good. That's fine. I like that. That's simple. Acknowledges there's just it's just too much in your mouth, you know. Um, Thank, thanks is good. 
So are we hearing Atherton, gratefully, thanks. Our taxpayers and generous donors. Our generous donors and taxpayers. Generous, our Atherton now donors and taxpayers. No, you shouldn't put Atherton now up there because I mean, almost half, half of the donation has now come into the town, not through Atherton now. So, well, I think I think the town has brought in about two million, and Atherton now still brought in six point four. Uh, no, five point one. But I don't think that we're done. Okay. Um, well, so would we want to put? Atherton now uh, as part of the uh, list of um, donors. Yeah, you could add them. What, uh, can I make a suggestion on that one? Yes. What, what if you actually phrased a thank you to Atherton now expressly as a sentence along the bottom of the donor wall? I was going to suggest that we just list them, but you list it as the uh, volunteers of Atherton now as an item on the wall. And the other thing I wanted to say, I was muted, I was trying to talk, is that the final, final layout of this is going to, we're going to have to look at it one more time because we don't know how many words and the size of, you know, how many. So until you get all that, you're not going to get the final look of it. And that can be, we can, uh, mess around a little bit with the sizes in the different categories once we see how long each of them are. Well, George, aren't we going to have Atherton now on the, on the base plaque that's outside that's got, the, you know. Dedication plaque, yes. Yeah, so they're going to be recognized there. Uh, you know, if, if we can't figure out how to put them here, then so, they are going I, to be recognized. Could you could you explain that to me a little bit more because I'm I'm not aware of that. There's a dedication plaque that goes on the exterior of the building inside yeah. the the portico area. It goes on typical public buildings, council member names, project manager names, project architect, etc. And we also express a special thanks to Atherton Now, Civic Center Advisory Committee, uh, and and those sorts of things as it goes down. I see. Uh -huh. So I, I think that's sufficient for recognition of Atherton now. I, I definitely think it would be a mistake to put Atherton now before the word donors because these donors are more than Atherton now. That's true. Yeah, that yeah. is that's true. Yeah, yeah, I think the outside the outside plaque covers it for them. I don't think we need to add them here because these are their donors. And but the only thing I'd like to mention to y'all is that and and Rick, you know we we had agreed and recognized that, that we would just take the donors that Atherton now tells us that are under 10,000 and list them. We yeah. can make it as small as you want, but they yeah. said they wanted all their donors there. Yeah. If we and draw a line at $500. No, I don't think we should. I, 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 my suggestion, Bill, was that line for money that comes in directly to the town. We should take all the other, because Atherton now isn't telling us what, dollar amount each donor is giving they're just giving a list of names by in each category and they'll give us the bottom category and we'll just i yeah. think we should take all those names and put them up which which and which we yeah we will okay. have all right okay no i, I didn't i think understand. that makes sense i think that okay. makes sense yeah okay and, all right yeah because i can i ask don't can have I a fight get a with consensus? no i don't want to <laughs> either can i get a consensus about uh what how we're going to organize them? Are you thinking that they would be just randomly listed or in alphabetical order? Since we're going to draw a line on how many people, you know, we're not going to leave it open for to add. Go ahead, Rick. I think alphabetical order makes sense. I, I think what you said is exactly right. People are going to come up and look at the wall and they're going to want to find their name. And finding it alphabetically will make it very easy for them. If it's random, then there'll be some assumption, well, is this in order of donation amount, which we aren't going to know what the donation right. amounts are, uh, or some just general random doesn't make sense to me. I think alphabetical order is the right answer. Right. Okay. Good. Quick question. Yes. Uh, so do we know, will we, will we be able to know the, all the names by, um, I don't know, let's say like 
pretty soon uh, to make sure everything's alpha ties uh, because if we add it in the future then we'd have to reorganize the layout and um, that could be problematic and working with the schedule that we have just wanted to understand like the timing of when we would have all the final names which i think makes a lot of sense we're not making any changes in the future so there, there is a cutoff date jenny uh, that we gave to after to now to give us their list by september 1st and we can stop our collection of names on or around that day too, or known donors that are going to come in after that date would be fine as well. And so you'll have that. And what I would suggest for the for the council in order to keep this moving along is once we have all of that together, we create a mock-up of all of those names, alphabetized, listed, and spaced, and bring that back to the subcommittee and, and authorize the subcommittee to bless it so it can keep going forward. Is that okay, Rick? Uh, yeah, I think that's good. I, I I do think that it may be that we have, at the end of the day, less names than we think we're going to have because this wall reflects the total number of donations based on information from their website. But my guess is we may not get that many people to respond either to the town's request or to Atherton Now's request. And we can't just randomly name people based on the website. People have to tell us how they want their names listed. That's that's correct. But at, at present in total, including all of Atherton Now's list and what the town has, we've got about 223 donors in total. Oh, so Atherton Now has given you their list? No, uh, their, their list from their website. Okay, but, but their list could be quite a bit different than their website. Correct. Okay. Um, I do have one more thing, Madam yes, Mayor. Yes, I was just going to ask you. You're yeah, not no, it's, it, it, I just heard, I think Rick and, and someone else made a comment about the, the, the type, the size of type relating to, to the contributions. I said that. Oh, okay. no. Yes. Well, yes. Okay. Um, I guess my thought is, I, I, I am not a big fan of having a huge difference between the biggest donors and the smaller do smallest donors. I know we're going to have a difference, but I, I, the, the purpose of this thing is not to call out the big donors specifically. I, I, I would that can be a mistake to have really really small print for the the smaller donors and really really large print for the biggest donors. Um, so I think I'm going opposite what Rick was saying. And well, I just wanted to get that yeah, point out. Understand? I, I think yeah. that the illustration that we have here, Mike does not differentiate the size of type very, very much at all. And it's very hard for me to make a, <laughs> I think an intelligent, uh, educated decision about it because it's, you know, I don't have the dimensions. You can kind of see a little bit, but, it, and, but this is a 14 by 10 foot environment that, you know, in real time. Mayor, can I ask a quick question? This is Anthony. I'm not sure if you took public comment already, but I just want to. No, we haven't. Okay, just want to yeah. check. So we're, but we're not. Can I ask a question? Yet. Yes, Diana. When we went out to the people and we asked them to give what they're going to say on their names, do we give them a limit? Like, can we say in the honor of, you know, Joe or something like that? Can we, can they write something long is what I'm trying to say. Did we give them a, a limit? of what they can say. We, we did not, and, mm -hmm. and some have provided some longer versions. The longest one I think is 45 characters. So mm -hmm. far. Well, well, I thought we were gonna, gonna, I thought we were gonna cut that out. I thought well, we were gonna not, cut that's that. Not a, that's not an in honor of one. That one is actually listing all of their family names. Okay. Meaning kids? Yes. Or, well, I don't know, but. But yes. Yeah, I gotcha. Well, see, some of this is going to have to be fine-tuned in the end because that will, if, you know, what category is that in? If that's in one of the bottom categories, that would be hard to do because the bottom category you see is like each entry is one line. If the yeah. person who does a real long one's up at the top, you can give them the extra space. But we didn't make a character limit, so this is going to be an interesting word dilemma. Uh just a comment. I, I just wanted to clarify my comment about the typeface size. I, I, I agree with Mike that it shouldn't be a huge difference and that the top name shouldn't be very large and the bottom name is very small. 
I was only commenting on this image, which shows that bottom category as more than half of the entire donor wall. And I thought that was more than should go to the bottom category. So I was just saying that should be, those names should, we should see if we could add an additional column with, by making those names slightly smaller. But I think it, it, we have to wait and see how many names we get from Atherton now and from the town before we can really make an intelligence judgment. And I'm fine for the subcommittee to manage that. Yeah, so I, I think in, in a normal plaque that I see where they have all these names down there, the bottom ones are substantially smaller than the ones above it. Yeah. And so I think your comment, Rick, was, was is right on, you know, make it smaller because that was our concession to Atherton now. Okay, we'll list everybody, but some of those ex lower names are going to be smaller. That's fine. Right. And and just, and that was okay with that. Yeah, the, uh, the Mitchell and Kathy Barron Family Foundation sample name there, that's about 45 characters. They uh, add uh, something. Uh, so the size for the letters uh, for the ones that we're seeing right now, the smallest category is at five eighths of an inch, which is the minimum uh, required for cutting for fabrication. So we cannot probably go smaller. Otherwise, they can't cut it just because it's so fine. Um, so, but we can make the others bigger. But this will be the minimum uh, size five, required. Okay, five eighths of an of an inch. inch. Correct. Which is like one eighth more than a half inch. <laughs> yes. Yeah. An eighth, an eighth of this is a twelfth of an inch. And it's a sixteenth of a micrometer. No. Okay, but it was but about that big. I think <laughs> you know we, we just have to see how many names there are, and, and and we won't know that until we get the that list from Atherton now, which I guess they were supposed to have delivered today. Okay. Uh, all right. I think so, we should set a, a date. I mean, because there are some other donations still coming in to the town. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so from council members, my council colleague, have we discussed this enough? Can I open it up to the public for to hear public comments at this time, and then bring it back to us? Okay. So at this point, everyone, um, please. Uh, Raise your hand, uh, let Anthony know that you'd like to make a public comment and um, he'll bring you up. No, I, I don't see anyone with a hand raised, but just as yeah, a reminder. Uh, John Mulpesh has got his hand Okay. There we go. John, how are you? Unmuted at the moment. There we go. Oh, oh, well, okay. <laughs> Unmute and speak up. I think how are I'm you? unmuted. Good. I have a couple of comments. Good. The first one is irrelevant, but I'm going to make it anyway. All right. And maybe the other two are, I don't know. Uh, right. The first one is, I seem to recall from a past meeting sometime, talking about another material option, which was sort of engraved glass. And I guess that's now off the table, but I really like that idea. Yeah. So that's the irrelevant comment. Okay. Uh, <laughs> The other is just, if you're looking for expressions of preference from a member of the public, uh, I like the stone better than the metal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had sort of a, an idea that probably makes no artistic sense uh, about the structure. And I wondered if the uh, upper categories down to the, what is it, the 10 to 20, 10 to $50,000 category, be organized, structured like that. And the large number below that be put in that sort of random affair on the other thing. And so you'd have a, a, a bunch of donor categories sort of floating on a sea of supporting contributors. That's very interesting. And it could be in alphabetical order also, instead of just the, the gridded below. And it would... Um would take less space, I think. I mean, that's, yeah. we hadn't, we, we hadn't thought different. about that design alternative, but. Okay, that's all I have to say. Thank you, okay. Any other member of the public have uh, an idea or a comment that they'd like to talk about? Any member of the public? I'm scrolling now. 
don't see anyone with their hand raised, but I will keep looking as you guys discuss. City manager has his, but he's not a member of the public. He's definitely not in this conversation right now. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, if there's no member of the public, let's see, let's hear from our city manager. I'm actually gonna point out something that our finance director pointed out was that the size of the lettering is uh, WRNS has them listed here. So the smaller ones are five eighths of an inch, seven eighths of an inch, inch and an eighth for the next category, inch and a quarter, and inch and five eighths for the top category. I thought that was Chinese hieroglyphics. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> it's a little small, but but if you zoom in, you can see it. No, I don't. So, so I, I I I I think that the issues that I'm pretty clear on so far is there's consensus that Atherton now is recognized on the dedication plaque, and that's sufficient. Was one number two was um, the wording. Atherton gratefully thanks our generous donors and taxpayers. Is that the consensus of the council on that? Okay. Say it again, please. Atherton gratefully thanks our generous donors and taxpayers. How does that sound? Everybody say it uh, twice, three times. How does that roll off your tongue? Atherton generously thanks. Atherton gratefully thanks our generous donors and taxpayers. Atherton gratefully thanks our generous donors and taxpayers. Mike, how do you feel about that? Um, I think Diana's suggestion about getting rid of the town of was, was very helpful. I thought that was a good one. I, um, I think gratefully thanks is slightly redundant, but um, <laughs> you, you, know, could up, you could change out taxpayers to residents. You could uh, do any number of things with that one too. So one of the things that we've got here, we're because of the donor wall itself, we are acknowledging these donors. It's not just the expression of gratitude, but I mean, and, and that's, I think, why I have such a hard time with replacing acknowledges, but I don't really like the acknowledge, you know, word, it's too long, commemorates, and commemorates is really long too, but um, essentially that's what we're doing with this donor wall. We are acknowledging them, you know, with gratitude. We need an English major. <laughs> The word recognizes works. Recognizes. Yeah, that's good. Where at? Say what? Where, where, where in the sentence? Oh, Atherton. Instead of acknowledges, or and I mean, I, I'm okay with thanks, but it's true. This donor wall is recognizing or acknowledging yeah. these generous donors instead of thanks. Gotcha. I need to find yeah. my thesaurus. Uh, I don't have it handy here. Um, Atherton recognizes our generous donors and taxpayers. Obligatory taxpayers. <laughs> well, semantically, you should say uh, generous donors. And, and if you went semantically, it should be Atherton. Yeah. The taxpayers and generous donors. So only the generous, only the donors semantically. You know what I'm trying to say? Yes. Yes. Only the, only the donors are generous. Taxpayers are not. Right. Okay. <laughs> that's that's taxpayers I guess. And well, generous well, they, well, the donors are also taxpayers, but they gave a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, because if you say generous donors and taxpayers, then it's like you're lumping them all together and being yes, it's gotta be the other way around. It's gotta got be it. taxpayers and generous donors. Okay. Okay, well, great. That's fine. Let's try that. I know that. All right. So Atherton. Atherton, what? Recognizes. Recognizes our taxpayers and generous donors. Correct. Yeah. Recognizes our taxpayers and generous donors. Okay. Uh, Are we dropping gratefully then, George? Yeah. Well, right. well, let's put gratefully right. back into it since I love gratefully, and also you're making it very short. It's not going to exactly. I was just going to say you don't want to make it too short. Gratefully is good. So Atherton gratefully recognizes our taxpayers and, and generous, generous donors. donors. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I like okay. it. 
I think we've got some consensus going on here. Go in terms ahead. of the alpha organized, that's supported, I hear from the council, but the subcommittee will take a final look at it when it's done. And if we need to adjust a name here or there, based on that, we can look at that. And okay, so the material, um, if, I, I, you know, I know everybody said, oh, Stone's going to be such a long lead time. We can't do it. We got to get a Mason, you know, everything. I think it, I've heard everybody indicate that they would really prefer Stone. And I would like that also. I think that uh, we may be very disappointed when we see how the metal backing actually has to work because it's not going to be one solid piece. It's going to be seamed. And I think they've got it. I, I think in three pieces, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't, haven't seen the layout of how they're, you know, how the metal sheet will be carved up. But wait, it, I, I have a question, Elizabeth. If you like the, um, the running design, bond. The, running the, bond. the running bond in the stone, why couldn't you do running bond in the metal? It's That's just, a lot of cutting up. See, the one of the reasons that metal is a little less expensive, you don't get little uh, blocks, squares, rectangles of the metal and install it. There, it's like sheets. I should ask Jenny, explain that to us, okay? Yeah, I think uh, so. Yeah, so this one is the running bond. And uh, George, if you flip to the second option, it shows the seam. And this one is based on the metal. Uh, size that it comes in typically it's four by eight or four by ten um, you can get them which uh would fit we have the 10 feet tall here so it's divided into four panels with three seams one in the middle and then two on either side um, i believe they should be able to do if we want if we really like the running bond um, patterns we could have the metals cut up and do the same it definitely will increase the cost uh, like elizabeth mentioned uh, but uh, that's an another option but that would definitely increase the cost um, then that's something that design fabricator would have to advise on and there's, uh, there's a high i think having these these lines going down makes the thing look cheap I agree that's what i'm that. saying that's what I'm saying. The no, stone we're... is the way to go. Yeah, why don't we right. get the Let's detail? Just make a decision. That's it. That... Why don't we get the detail on what the stone would cost and how long it would take and what it would cost if we were to use this metal and structure it in the running bond pattern? I think you I think that would be a big mistake, Jenny. Um we, uh, well, we can certainly get those that information for you, but I've just saying you're 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 if you if you move to the stone there is a higher than average chance this is not going to be done by the grand opening in november you know john, and, and george, that's, fine, that's okay but george we could have another party i don't want i just that's what i said if it's fine if the council is okay I with that, really that's okay. Feel that you know just because of the expediency of time and we're under the gun we've got to compromise something that we were working really hard to memorialize. I mean, this is going to be on the wall for another hundred years. So if, if the council is fine with that, we're fine with it. We can well, I think that, that should be a discussion between council. Well, we should do our best to expedite it. That's all. Do our best to expedite the, the, the stone. And we don't know how long it's going to take. Everybody's just saying it will take. Well, That's let's right. get the information. Right. I, we don't know how much it's going to cost either. I don't know how we can decide this without knowing the information. We can't, you know, we just assume and I, I'm, I'm not. So thank you guys. So I guess the first priority would be to try to get an estimate so that we can compare the estimates. I don't even know how much these other things are going to cost. Well, the, in terms of process, the, the sign vendor that's connected to the project, um, I forget what the name of that sign vendor Thomas is. Swan. Thomas Swan signs would be the one we would be using if we went with the metal because they could fabricate that and we could do that as a change order to the project and just process it along. Right. The stone, we don't have a stonemason connected to the project. We would most likely, given that cost, have to bid that project out. So that adds the bid time to whatever process we're looking at, plus the time for the vendor to source the material and do it. That's why I'm saying there's a Stronger than high chance, it's not going to be done by the end of the, the project, and we know that. 
But, we, um, but if that's okay, that's that's perfectly fine. Who who is the who who were the tile guys that we were using to install all the tile around and the stone on the wall by the uh, staircase? Those are stone masons. Uh, I don't know, Jenny. Do you know who they are? I think I've had to defer to John or Pauline on that. It looks like John just dropped off. Pauline, yeah. it looks like you're I on the just line. think that, you know, there is, um, Pauline, are you there? I am. I don't recall the name, but I can, we can look it up. I can look it up. But clearly that was a vendor mm -hmm. that Amoroso was using to install stone on the walls. And we need somebody that's going to install stone on a wall. So... We should be able to get the information without going through a public bid. We can at least get an estimate yeah. on what it would cost. And I think we should get an estimate on what the using this metal and structuring it in the running bond pattern. I, I honestly, when I looked at the stone and I looked at this metal, it, it doesn't look very different to me. Just it feels different, but it doesn't look different. And if it were, I agree that that these three vertical lines look cheap. Absolutely, but, they're terrible. But okay, but if, but if you could have this done in your running bond pattern, then, possibly, yeah. Then it's not going to look cheap. We just have to know what it would cost, and we should be able to get that information. Uh, even uh, if the running, even if the uh, squares, the rectangles are bigger, a little bit bigger than the stone, you know, let's let's just see. Yes, Bill. Uh, I don't know why we're not going to let Amoroso. Amoroso doesn't have to go through all the processes that we have and have the council approve it and put delays in. You know, it's part of the construction project. It would only be then a change order. So I, I think you ask the Amoroso to find somebody or we can guide them uh, for, a, you know, a stonemason that would put this stuff up. I don't think it's going to take that long of where they're going by commercial means. Yeah. Okay. Well, they have to get the stone, but I, I agree. We should just ask them to give us a change order estimate for either the metal in the running bond pattern or the stone in the running bond pattern. And I, okay. I agree with Elizabeth. This, the metal could be larger than what the stone running bond pattern is. It doesn't matter. It would look better than these three vertical columns. Right. Okay. So it, it, uh, Vice Mayor, do you have anything to add to this? No. Okay. Uh, Diana, do you have anything to add to this? No, I agree with what everyone's saying. Okay. So um, let's just wrap this up. There was no other public comments and we'll just move on to our next agenda item. Okay. But can I just add one thing, Elizabeth? <laughs> uh, which is, no, we, we need to set a date for when the names are going to be finalized. Is it the end of September? We, ha we have to have a date. We gave it September 1st. That's today. We gave them September 1st. They were supposed to give it to us. We have not yet received it. Uh, Marty just came on the line. I'm not sure why uh, he came in maybe to hear the outcome of the donor wall. Uh, so if, if I could summarize that just to make sure I'm clear on where you want to go with it. You want to get a estimate on the stone as a change order uh, using Amoroso as a change order to do stone on the wall as well as get an estimate for the um, running bond style of the like the black and steel or one of the other choices from Amoroso as well as well as a potential timing of those two items, is that correct? Yes. Marty, did you get that? He's still. Yeah, I'm writing it down right now. So. Well, we can email you. A I'll give you other details as well. Yeah, summary would be nice. Too. And and it is being recorded, so. <laughs> Do you know okay. who the stone sub is for Amoroso, Marty? Uh, not offhand. I'd have to find out who that is. So. Okay. All right. So I think we've summarized. And let's let's move on to our next uh, item here because uh, we've spent a lot of time on this. It's important. It really is. And thank everyone for all of their good input. I really appreciate it. So item number five is um, the... Um, 
review and discuss the selected naming opportunities and provide staff with direction. And George, you wanna kick that off? Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. In the background section of the staff report, you have a list of all the available naming opportunities that were associated with the project. Since this staff report was created, the Redwood Grove and the Heritage Tree Reading Area were both uh, selected by, by new donors that donated to the town 100 and 150,000. So those yeah. are removed from that list. Um, and then what's to be discussed this evening are, are two items. One is the small conference room, the Willie Mays conference room. For that, Council Member DeGolia would need to recuse himself. And then the second item would be the naming of the new road. So Madam Mayor, you can take those in either order if you wish. Would you let, uh, advise us to which you'd like to go first? Uh, I don't have a preference. Does anybody have a preference? The Willie Mays one is listed in the staff report first. And I, I, Rick, I can text you upon return. Okay, no problem. But you need to state for the record why you're recusing, I believe. Uh, well, I'm recusing myself because you want to talk about the donation, uh, the room that I've chosen as a naming opportunity as a result of um, my and my wife's donation. Okay, cool. I'll text you to return. Okay. All right, so the, the Willie Mays room, uh, uh, Councilman DeGoli had donated toward that room. It's a small conference room. That's the amount that he donated. There were two small conference rooms in the project. The conference room for the Willie Mays room is in the forward section of the library, so it's closer to the kids. Uh, when the subcommittee went out to look at the donor wall, I'm sorry, the, uh, the rooms for the naming opportunities, uh, the library was interested in theming or assisting in theming the Willie Mays room. And there's some samples in the staff report of some images that they came up with. Those are just samples of some things that they would like to do, potentially a baseball table or a glass etching of a scene for Willie Mays. Uh, and then it was also raised, uh, and I think Councilmember Widmer can articulate it uh, better yeah. than I, that the potential to move the room based on the amount of memorabilia and the the recognition itself to the large conference room. So, Council yeah, Member. yeah. So, um, this first came up when we were actually there were there were no walls. There was just the girders up, and uh, we could see how small the rooms were going to be. And um, so, I suggested at that time, and I still feel that way after seeing actually the rooms plastered up, and we know exactly how large they are and what they're going to look like. Um, we're not going to do service to Willie Mays if we put it in a small little closet. I think that uh, I suggested at the time, and I still feel very strongly that, you know, this is a special room. It's going to draw interest, and we want to put the, as much memorabilia up in that room as we can. Now, there's, there's, there's one wall that's going to be a glass wall, so you can't put anything on that. Another wall is going to have a large screen, you know, for display and for working, you know, doing work on it. So that's gone. Uh, there's the rammed earth wall that, okay, we figured out that we might be able to hang things by wires from the top, which is not going to look so great. And then there's the other wall. So we felt, you know, the larger room would, would allow really more space for us to display things and do honor to the legend that we're we're recognizing and so it wasn't rick's idea it was my idea uh he felt uncomfortable about it because his name was on it but i feel very strongly about it and 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 again i want to say it wasn't his idea it was mine and i brought it up several times on it and so now we're bringing it up for for council review and hopefully approval Okay, thank you for that background, uh, Councilmember Widmer. Um, so, does any member of the council have a, a, a comment to make about this suggestion? Can I ask? Diana? A question? Mm -hmm. Are there any of the other conference rooms named? Yes, they are. Uh, the only one that is not selected to be named is the large conference room. But this is the only one that's themed, correct? The other people proposed. aren't giving a team with proposed, right. Has, I, I just want to ask every council member, 
Have you actually gone and looked into the three conference rooms now that the walls are up and everything, you know, for a tour? Do you have a sense of the size and scale of these rooms? Okay, just, just to put everything in perspective because what Councilmember Widmer said is absolutely true. And when we, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead of everybody, go ahead. I, I just wanted to make sure that everybody had that uh, scale in their head about how big these rooms are. Vice Mayor, you have a comment? Yeah, I, I guess I do. And I, I, I understand the point about the scale and I agree by the way that, that the, those rooms are really pretty small. Um, I, I do have a concern though, which I mean, we've gone through this naming several times and we adjusted our uh, dollar amounts in, in ways that benefited council members. And I don't, I, it just makes me uncomfortable. I don't think that's right. So I don't know how you handle this, um, except it, um, I'd like to see if we can bifurcate the issue as to which room Willie Mays gets and maybe maybe naming rights that a council member gets because we are treating council, we, in this case, we treat a council member differently than anybody else. Um, mm -hmm. And that, I don't think that we should be doing that as a general rule, I think, you know. So is there a way to bifurcate it? Is there a way to say, yeah, we'll make the, we'll just donate, we'll just name the larger conference room, the Willie Mays room and, and memoriam and maybe Rick keeps the small conference room that's in the Degolia name at that point or something like that. Okay. So again, I think that um, I understand uh, what you're saying, Vice Mayor, um, that we as a collective body months and months ago came up with these uh, prices, uh, price tags on these rooms, you know, based on a floor plan that we had no real idea about the scale of it all. And, uh, you know, it's not like, okay, okay, now we're going to try to play favorites with somebody. I think that it, the reality is, is that the, the, the existing conditions are not what we envisioned when we set those parameters. So it's not like we're, you know, always kind of moving the goalpost here. Well, I think we are moving the goalpost. We're very much moving the goalpost. We've moved it twice now, at least with regard to the small conference rooms. So I don't agree with that. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I think it's very, that's exactly what we've done. And, and you know, I, I would feel better about it, but for the fact we're talking about a council member. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I just feel like, you know, and we've had the same conversation previously about council members donations mm -hmm. and, Anyway, that's that's my opinion on it. All right, Mary Lewis, um, I, I would I would recommend that we ask for council questions at this time only, not comments, and then do public comment and then get back to comments and deliberations. Okay. Well, I, I guess my questions were, you know, that do we have a sense of the the scale of the existing conditions? Because, and I think that is a significant change in the uh, discussion. Anybody have a question about this? Okay, let's open it up for public comment. Any member of the public have a comment about this at this point? For anybody new to the conversation, if you'd like to make a public comment, please click participants at the bottom of your screen to raise your hand. I don't see anyone that's joined via phone. Um, and I don't see anyone with their hand raised at this time, Mayor. Okay. Um, bring it back to council for more discussion and comments. Thank you, uh, Mona, for having me do that. Madam Mayor, if there's one point I should raise, I'm sorry, and I think it's very clear that Rick did not ask for this. So this is not in any way directed at, at, at Rick, and I don't want anybody to think that it is. He, mm -hmm. he didn't ask for this. I want to make real clear on that. Okay. Um, Diana? I think it's a great idea. I really would like to see the bigger room that's themed be in the theme be in the bigger room. I did actually look at that and trying to figure out how to put anything in the other rooms in terms of theming is, is not realistic. I appreciate what Mike is saying. Um, I'm wondering if there's some way to um, have it be the Degolia room and the taxpayers room 
or some other way that to do it. But I know that it was Rick whose idea to do the Willie Mays room. So I don't feel that it's nice to say, okay, your name's on the little room and we're going to take your idea for Willie Mays room and put it on the bigger room. That doesn't seem fair. So I heard the suggest the creative suggestion of bifurcating it. But in this case, I don't think that's fair to uh, the Degolias whose idea it was to do the Willie Mays and they were the ones who went and got the memorabilia and all that stuff. So um, I think it's, in my opinion, I would just do it. I think it's a great idea. And if we need to have a second name of some sort put there, whether it's taxpayers or the library or whatever we want to say, if that makes it seem more fair, but personally I would just do it. And that's my opinion. I, 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 I agree with you on, on that, um, to maybe add another name. And the other name would be Willie Mays because he is donating all of this memorabilia. Right. Uh, and that is a significant contribution, um, both monetarily and, um, you know, emotionally. Um, he, so just, just to be clear though, he donated it to council member Degolia, not to the town. Okay. And why did he donate the, it to Council Member Degoya? For the for the oh. theme room, but I'm just I'm just for the room, right? Yeah, it's not, it's so, not the town's memorabilia. No. It belongs to Council Member Degoya, and he's, I guess, lending it or theming it for the room. Yeah, part of his donation. As part of his donation. Okay, Council Member Wimmer, do you have something else to add to this discussion? No, I, you know, I, I can understand where where Mike is coming from, um, you know, cause we had the discussion about the, uh, the deck, uh, but, you know, I just think that we need to do this thing right. And he made the donation, it was his idea. It wasn't his idea to go to the bigger room. It was mine. And I feel that uh, we would all be embarrassed if we, if we had the Willie Mays room be a little room. You're right. And so it's it's currently open and I feel that it's and we don't have a donor for it. I, I just feel it's the right thing for us to do. And since it was his idea and, and his his family is you know fronting the, the original money and he made the approach to Willie Mays, uh, I'm in favor of of uh, you know, with all due respect, Mike, I, you know, I understand where you're coming from. Um, but uh, but I, I feel that we should just leave it as is and just, uh, you know, approve it this way. That's how I feel. And again, it wasn't his idea. He didn't ask for it. Can I ask another question? It, what about the idea that Elizabeth had about saying the Degolia family and Willie Mays? Does that make, make it better? I, I believe that's already part of uh, the plaque. Okay. And one of the arguments we were saying before is we don't like calling out how much every single person has given. So we're kind of arguing both sides of it to some degree. So, and I appreciate that, but. I believe I'll need a, a, a motion of consensus on this one. Did we lose the mayor? Actually, can we Here do I a am. roll call since we have one member recused? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So do we need a motion first? Yes. yes. May I get a motion to um, approve the um, naming of um, the larger conference room um, for the Degoyas in Willie Mays memorabilia? I, I, I so move that. Can I get a second? I'll second. Okay, Anthony, let's do the roll call, please. Council member Hawkins. Aye. Council member Widmer. Aye. Vice Mayor Lempris. Um, oh boy. <laughs> I don't, I, 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 I will I say I. I. We can abstain. Yeah, no, I just, I, I, I don't think it's illegal. I think, I, I, I think it's, it, it, it's playing favorites, but I, I don't think it's illegal. And I understand the reasoning. I'll say aye. 
Mayor Lewis. Aye. And I will note for the record that Council Member Degoli did recuse himself from this item. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on to the second part of this agenda item, which uh, we can bring Rick back into the. Yes, I, uh, I texted him, he should be coming back online. Uh, but before he comes back online or as he's coming back online, just want to note Robert uh, Barone and I, I have spoken with a donor who is interested in naming at the $100,000 level and freeing up the small conference room allows them to donate their 100,000 to the small conference room if they wish to name it. So there's, a, there's another donor tried to fill in that. Who, who wouldn't donate unless we had a conference room to name? No, they were going to donate 100000 and they were asking around for naming opportunities. Yeah. They just didn't want to be on the wall, and there wasn't any. Uh, so this is an opportunity for them if they, if they wish to. I think that's a, I think that's a win-win in that situation. Uh, I texted him. We can wait until he comes back online, if you wish, or go ahead and get started. Why don't you start? Because I think that he'll, he'll catch up quickly. Right. Uh, so this one is the naming of the new road. As the council is aware, there is a road that uh, turns north uh, from Ashfield to Fair Oaks. Uh, and that road is listed as a naming opportunity at the $5 million level. We did not have any donors step up for that. As the building creeps closer to opening, uh, we need to come up with a name for that particular road uh, at some point. So it was suggested that the council have an opportunity to discuss that uh, in the absence of a donor. And that's why it's on your agenda tonight. Okay, Rick, you're, you're back. Glad to see you back. Did you hear the, um, George's uh, brief here about the naming of the new road? Um, well, I read the staff report. Okay, so you're up to, so does any member of the council have a question for uh, city manager about this? I do but I'll let anybody else go before me if there's. So what is the, what is the time sensitivity about this? Just that, that we don't have a donor and we will open in November and that road section will not have a name. Okay. Well, by November. You never know if there's gonna be a donor to step up. There was just suggested that it come to the council for discussion. discussion. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, you know, I think that uh, there are donors. Well, that was my question. Anybody else have a question? Yeah, I assume we could rename it at any time. If we gave it some placeholder name, we could rename it. Right. In six months or a year or whatever. Right. Yeah. Okay. Diana? Does it have to be renamed? It looks like it's, a I'd only looked at it on the drawing, so I have to qualify what I'm saying, but it, does it have to be named or was this a naming opportunity we were creating? Is this a directional thing that someone will need to know? It's an it, extension of Ashfield really actually, uh, um, uh, but, but it is going through our civic center and it's the new road that's being created off of Fair Oaks for our civic center entrance. But our address is on Fair Oaks, correct? Yes. Correct. Yeah, but it's, it's kind of an extension of Dinklespiel, which is already there. <laughs> That's it. That's a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want if you want it to have a name, you well, know, I-, I, wait, wait, I wait, 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 Bill, just a second. Uh, oh. It's uh, Council Member Degolia's time. Turn. Oh, okay, oh. sorry. Uh, I think we should name the road. Uh, I, I think it, I mean, we could call it Asheville. We were asking but questions. Not Asheville. What? We were asking questions. I understand that, but okay. okay. I know you, I, I really want to hear your opinion, but let's no just problem. ask questions. I, I, okay. I, Anybody have a question? Did I get an answer to my question? I asked if we needed to have it named for directional reasons or is it for naming? Like, uh, will someone need that if they're driving and they're getting direct well, the road has the road has to have a name yeah. and we don't have a name for it at this point and so uh whatever name it it, it doesn't have a name right now yes uh council member hawkins but well yes uh google maps or or any of your apple maps will need to tell folks to turn right on x street in order okay. to get to okay that was my question thanks so let's uh vice mayor did you have a question okay so I'm going to ask the public if there's any uh, member of the public that wants to comment on this, have a question or a comment, the naming of the road and the timing of naming of the road. 
urgency Not, of naming of the road. I don't see anybody, nobody new has joined the meeting, Mayor. Okay. Let's come back and I'll call on Council Member DeGolia because you have a comment and I'd love to hear it. Okay, so uh, I would say that I, I'd still like to encourage the public to make a donation. If somebody comes forward with a donation that is less than the $5 million that we've set it at, I would certainly consider it. And I would encourage people to do that. But we have done that many times and we haven't gotten anyone who's made an offer. Um, my, my comment is in the absence of a donor, and, and I'm, I'm happy to talk about what the right time frame is, which I think is a perfectly valid thing to consider. But in the absence of that, um, I would love to name the street after Malcolm Dudley. He's the longest serving council member in the history of the town. Uh, you know, uh, we do have Dinkerspiel Station Lane. Uh, John Dinkerspiel was the only judge who became a council member. Uh, I mean, it, I, I'd love to have somebody choose the naming opportunity and name it for themselves or after somebody who they think is, you know, important to the town. But in the absence of that, I would uh, recommend naming it after Malcolm Dudley. Okay, thank you. Mr. Widmer. Sure, um, I think we should name it after, my, my thought when I was considering what we should do, um, you know, cause there's people that go back and forth on Malcolm, by the way, uh, who had, who owned the original property? It was the indigenous people, the, the, the Ohones. Why don't we recognize them? You know, we're, we're recognizing people that have, you know, made a major donation they not only, well, they didn't really make a donation. It was taken from them, but this, it's their, it was their land. And so, uh, you know, going through the, under the, under the oaks, um, you know, I thought that, hey, it's right out at the beginning of that, of, that, of that book too. Why don't we go ahead and at least recognize, you know, where the, who got, who, who was at the land first? Okay, thank you. That's an interesting comment. Anybody else? You have, want to make a comment, Vice Mayor? Yeah, I, I guess my thought is, is we should decide whether we're kind of giving up on the idea of a, of a big donor. Um, because it, let's say hypothetically we named it after Malcolm. I, it, it'd be hard to take that name away in, in oh, you know, you six can't months pay, or a year. I, I think you're right. You can't. Yeah. It, that's why I said in the absence of the donation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I mean, I guess for me that'd be a threshold question. Is like, what's our goal here? Is it to permanently name a road, or is it just to put a placeholder in that we could reconsider in in six months or a year or some time we decide? Okay. Okay. Council Member Hawkins Manuelian, you uh, want to make a comment on this? Not really. Not I, really. I like I like both of them. I of course like the only way slightly better. Mm -hmm. uh, for political. You like what one? Oh. I like naming it after the Indians that had the land to start with, of right, course. Right. Uh, I think there's a lot. I, I understand as, that city manager has a sense of urgency in wanting to check off all the boxes and make sure that we get, the, you know, get things named uh, in time for, you know, directional signals and things like that. Um, and uh, kind of uh, building off of what Vice Mayor said, um, that if we named it uh, temporarily, uh, you know, say um, Town Center Way or something uh, innocuous, and if we then got a, a donor, uh, we could always change that. If we decide right here, right now to name it after uh, a resident who, you know, really does tug at our hearts. And I really appreciate um, Councilmember DeGoya's sentiment. Um, I was at, uh, he was, and I were at Malcolm's cer celebration of life the other day. And he really is a giant of a man and the longest tenured uh, council person uh, in the history of Atherton. But that's not to say that there's not gonna be somebody else that may be that long at some point you know, uh, and just to make that as the benchmark, but he did 
have a significant impact on Atherton. I understand Councilman Widmer saying, you know, hot and cold, but I mean, gosh, um, aren't we all subject to being hot and cold, you know, uh, everybody. So I just am not feeling that I would like to participate in, it, in any kind of firm decision at this time. And we can bring it back. Madam Mayor, if I could make a, a suggestion, if, can, we, can we just pick a date where if we haven't done anything, we say, okay, we are gonna reconsider this in a year or something like that? Yes. Um, so if we give it a placeholder name, like an innocuous name, it doesn't just stay for 20 years without us right. actually thinking about it and saying, yeah, we, here's the name. Yes. I think I'd propose something like that. We put some yes. name on it and then and commit I, that we're gonna reconsider it. Yeah. I, and I like, like what you say, an innocuous term, not an emotional term, because if we named it after the old Indians, that's kind of an emotional you know, name and it'd be hard to take that away, I think at this point. So uh, do we have any consensus on that? I think, you know, a city, city plaza or city way, something is, you know, city hallway, that's, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> that's what was, yeah. Um, it's not city hall, it's our town hall. This well, is our whatever we want to, yeah, I got it. But, but yes, or, or George, it's too light, city, George, city, too light. City hall, city town, hall. Cent, town center I'm, way. I'm going to keep beating him over the head about it. You know? Well, what, but I, Look, I don't feel super strongly about this, but I but I, I will push it because I think it's worth considering. I mean, I I have zero disagreement with that idea. I think it's a very good suggestion that the vice mayor made. Um, I'm very comfortable to take a temporary name for a year, but if rather than city hallway, I'd name it after Malcolm Dudley. I and the and we. You may feel that that's too emotional and we could never take it away. But if we set it up and we say, you know, we can reconsider it in a year and if a donation comes in, we'll take that. It, it gives recognition. And that's, you know, I think, it, I think that's a very nice gesture. So it would be a nice gesture. I, I, personally, I personally feel Rick, you know, I understand you know, Malcolm just passed and just had the memorial service and things like that. But, you know, putting, putting a name of a person out there forces people to either say, okay, I'll go along with it or look like, you know, a villain by saying, saying no. And I, and I really don't want to be put in that position personally. I think, I think it's wrong. Okay. It forces us to make a decision. Okay, and if we decide to vote against it, then well, you know I, it's descendants are going to say, I, "Whoa, you know that guy is a jerk." You know. Okay. Okay. So maybe we should think about it, but there's no. Should I? It's should not we, something we have to do right now. How about this? How about if we uh, ask if there's any member of the public who has an opinion about this? Any member of the public, Anthony? Have and I, I don't, I don't see anyone. But for any of the few members that are still remaining, if you have a, a comment you'd like to make, please click participants, raise your hand, or unmute yourself and announce announce yourself. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I think it's I'd a like good to thing to back. think about. I, I think we should think about it. I don't think we should make a decision at this point. I don't think it is a time sensitive, a decision that has to be made tonight. And we can bring this back as the. It, because everything keeps getting pushed further and further into the future, okay? So we'll bring it back for um, more discussion, say at the end of October, 1st of November, okay? All right, moving rapidly along to item number six, um, which is our automated license plate reader, ALPR, effectiveness, efficiency, review and burglary activity update and statistics um, uh, for our, oh, I see my city manager has his hand raised. I'm Have not you, gonna let our chief of police. He is, he is going to give that report and, and it's 540 now. And just so the council's not pressured to move through this item quickly, uh, we can do number seven at a future council meeting. That's perfectly fine. I think that's a good idea. I would really, I would really like to do that. Okay. 
we could have an all day Saturday uh, off uh, off campus meeting. Yeah, at, at your house. house. <laughs> over at the, over at the Ritz at Half Moon Bay, yeah, I think I love that outside. They've got a lot of outside fresh air. I think we should do that. So why don't you arrange that, George? As long as there's adult beverages, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Only after the discussion. Okay, so Chief George, Rock. let's talk about this. Yes, we're going to give it twenty right minutes, over, right? Get right over to the chief. I'll try to do less than twenty minutes, even though Robert Barron suggested I have a fifty-page PowerPoint, but I. Oh my gosh. Well, you no, do have a, a, throwing a stones, you Chief. Do. That doesn't sit well. You do have a chart that I cannot read. Uh, I'll help you through it. You also have a map that doesn't even show my neighborhood being part of the town. Now, come I'll on. Dress, come I'll on, dress. Chief. I'll I didn't know right. you Let's, succeeded. Okay. I've That's already been admonished by Mr. Roderick's over that. No, okay. It shows your neighborhood in the Thank town. You, no, All right. we're in the dark area. Hmm. Good evening, council members and members of the public. Uh, this is designed to give you an update on our ALPR project and also an update on burglaries to date uh, in 2021 in Atherton. I'll be brief, but thorough. Uh, as with my past presentations, I always like to be brief and then take your questions, comments, and concerns. And I think it really helps drive the discussion. So with that, just as a quick history lesson, uh, very first week of December, 2020, we installed and deployed 21 ALPR cameras uh, around town. Since that time, within several months, thanks to a very, very successful public-private partnership, we've installed and deployed an additional 43, and four more will be going on ECR within a few weeks for a total of 47 cameras. A recent study of our system is showing us that from the 43 cameras that we have right now, we're reading approximately 2.5 million license plates which is over 30, uh, license, 30 million license plates annually. And we expect that number to dramatically jump when we install the four cameras in each direction on uh, ECR. <clears throat> They've proven to be a very effective tool in detecting and what, what we're hoping is deterring crime. If you refer to the list of ALPR successes that we refer to within the very first week, when we had the burglary in Lindenwood where they stole over $800,000 worth of jewelry, we are able to use the system, identify the suspect vehicle, unfortunately not the suspects to date, but that gave important information for de detectives in Southern California to work with. And we continue to work with those detectives as they relate to the Chilean uh, gang members. We had the attempted murder in Lloyden Park. That's actually going to trial uh, within a couple of weeks. Without the ALPR cameras, we would have had zero suspect information because of the cameras. We were able to identify both suspects uh, within a few hours and take one into custody within a few days. Another noted success uh, was a gentleman near Ensenal and Middlefield who decided to expose himself in a parked car to a young girl coming home to her home in Lindenwood from <clears throat> Sacred Heart. Uh, through the cameras, we were able to identify that suspect. He was a registered sex offender. He was wearing an ankle bracelet being monitored on parole. And he was also a suspect that through our work, helped the sheriff's office identify him in a similar incident in Half Moon Bay. So the cameras are uh, very effective. And, and we do believe that they, they, give in, they give information that we don't, wouldn't normally have. It's showing us that yes, we do have undesirable people coming through town. What their exact intent is, we don't know, other than if you have a person in a stolen car, which we've stopped with a person on parole, which we've had, armed with a weapon, trying to flee. These are dangerous people that are in our community and need to be identified. Uh, and these cameras are doing that for us. To date from a fiscal standpoint, we're still on the two year lease with all of these cameras. Uh, for the 21 town owned cameras, uh, as we come out of the two year lease and start into an annual lease, it'll be about $52,000 to continue to fund those. Uh, we're hoping that we maintain uh, the private funding if it were to drop off and if council chose to maintain the additional 26, that's a little over 62,000 a year for a total of about just under $120,000 to fund uh, these cameras. You know, and the cameras, as we've got the town owned cameras and we have private funded cameras, for the majority of the private funded cameras, the donors allowed us to locate these cameras in very strategic locations that we felt were the best way to create a network, if you will, a fence on the perimeter of town and some interior fences. We do have a few 
donated cameras. Uh, they were adamant they wanted it in a specific place that I don't think really helps us, but that's what they wanted. And by having this external internal fence, uh, particularly when the camera hits and we get advised that a stolen car has come through a camera, it really helps us with the network as it hits another camera and the way they're pointed. We can tell which direction they're going, which way they're headed, and then we can kind of hone in on where that person is. We have had several stolen cars where we have made contact and unfortunately they decided to flee uh, for this particular crime. We have a policy that we don't pursue. And there were several uh, stolen cars detected that we were not able to locate because we didn't get another hit on the camera. But again, these cameras are an effective tool. Uh, they're now being deployed. I think we were the first in San Mateo County and many of my fellow chiefs are deploying them throughout the county. And that, make, that makes a, a countywide network fence where we can start tracking people uh, of note that we need to. And one other success that we just recently had that wasn't related to a crime, but we had an elderly gentleman <clears throat> over 85 years old, was apparently supposed to be going to the bank. He never arrived at the bank in his car. The wife was concerned that he'd had an episode and, and was lost. And so we started implementing silver alerts. We instantly put the plate into our system. We were able to get an image of him in his car <clears throat> on Selby Lane. And the image just happened to capture his wrist with a black wristband. We we're able to show that to his wife. And indeed, she was able to verify that that was him. So we weren't concerned that he had been kidnapped. And then through the network of cameras in other areas and through our fusion center that collects all the camera data, we were able to locate him in Sausalito. And he eventually, we had authorities there looking for him. And then he eventually uh, turned himself into a gas station attendant asked for help. And because we had it all set up in the system, we were able to identify him and get him back safely. So that's just another side story and a side benefit that these cameras have for us. So with that, I will stop and take any questions, uh, more information you need about our cameras. Thank you, Chief. Um, Council Member Widmer, question. Sure, uh, Chief, I, I'm, I understood when we first talked about this that you um, you gave us the list and you told us the number of hits. Uh, I guess it would be, it would be worthwhile to know which hits or which series of cameras might have participated in helping either provide information to another jurisdiction or or help solve you know solve a, a, a particular issue or. Get, gathered information for an ongoing investigation since most of our burglaries are all ongoing at this point in time. That's what I thought that we were going to get here. And so you gave us, ha you know, two thirds of the data. I was just wondering, is it possible to get that other third or do you feel that that would be inappropriate? If I get your question correctly, you know, which cameras have assisted us? That is listed in our ALPR success list. So that information is there. Uh, I don't see it on what you presented. I think that's attachment three. Yeah, we have a list of eight or 10 successes that we singled out. And in those, we indicate, you know, which cameras were activated. Okay. Also, okay. Uh, all right. Well, no problem. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I thought that, you know, if you, if you had, like you'd said, we find things and we pass it on to another jurisdiction. I, I consider those all successes. So I, you know, I just would, it would be good just to see, see that information in a, in a third column over here, but that's fine. Okay, no problem. And that does bring up a good question that I was asked, you know, when you, you maybe, that I was asked to maybe prioritize the cameras that we have, you know, based on successes, based on reads, and if it came down to a matter of dollars and cents of what we needed to do. You know, obviously, again, we have positioned these cameras in what we feel are the most strategic locations on the exterior and interior of town. And to try to say that, you know, one camera off of Valparaiso in the last eight months hasn't got any hits, that camera is still very valuable because tonight, a camera, uh, tonight, a vehicle could go through that camera, be a part of a burglary. So it's really hard for me to say that, you know, these cameras aren't really beneficial. I believe they are. But if it did come down to dollars and cents, we pretty much have an idea uh, which cameras that we would want to keep, obviously. Okay. Well, Any well, other George, member of council have a question yeah. for um, Chief McCauley? Uh, Rick. 
Uh, I have two questions, Chief. The, the first is, it looks like from the staff report that the initial cost for the 21 cameras that we as a town subscribed for was $47,250 for two years. And that the continuing cost for those cameras, if I'm reading it right, is 2,500 a year. So because the initial was for two years and the continuing is for one year, uh, and the initial was for 2,250 per camera and the continuing is for 2,500 a camera, in fact, they've doubled the price on us. Uh, they haven't doubled the price. price. I understand where the confusion comes from. Uh, the, the CEO, when we initially entered into this, he mistakenly quoted a price of $2,000 per camera, and there's a one-time $250 install per camera. As we renew the lease, it'll have to be at the $2,500 per camera lease price. Okay, but but the, the first one was for two years, and the renewal is for one year? Yeah, so the first, uh, every camera has to have a minimum of a two-year lease, and then after that, <clears throat> it's annual. So... So that's a doubling of the price. It just seems to me that we can negotiate a better deal given how many were. It, it's not a doubling of the price. It's uh, it's a $500 per camera increase. Because the okay. original price that we did with the 21 cameras was $2,000. Chief, he's, he's, he's saying that the first agreement was $48,000 for two years. And the new agreement is $52,000 for one year. I might have miscalculated that because it should be two thousand twenty five hundred dollars per camera at twenty one cameras. Yep. Okay, but was it? Maybe for we can get clarification on that. Well, that's a, that's um, one question I have. I think it could be a typo thing. Yep, I'll give you clarification on that. Okay. Okay. Um, the second question that I had was the issue of. How uh, and I have no disagreement with with everything that you said, Chief. I, I think it was very helpful. I think your analysis uh, is extremely useful and valuable. Um, uh, and uh, the, the the one thing that I'm questioning is uh, how much the deployment of these cameras have actually deterred crime in the town. And of course you can't say because who knows, but, uh, but we, we can look at how many uh, home burglaries, not, not uh, the garage break-ins or the auto break-ins, but how many home burglaries there were before the cameras and how many there are after the cameras. And, and hopefully there's been a reduction. Uh, but it's not clear to me that there has been. Yeah, I would say that there hasn't been, unfortunately, that we're on track, and I'll get into more details about the burglaries. And, and you're right, it's very difficult to put your finger on how much of a deter deterrence factor there is. But, you know, my fellow chiefs that have these systems in the county, we all agree that there is definitely a deterrent factor, and we're just getting out, you know, among the criminals, they pay attention to things that we do have these systems. And I think the more that we install these systems throughout the county, the more successes that we celebrate and get out in the media, which we try to do all the time, uh, the more the deterrent factor comes into play. Okay. Uh, any other member of council have a question for Chief? Uh, Vice Mayor? Yeah, I, I do. And Chief, it relates to these, the, the number of, of hits, um, or not hits, I'm sorry, the number of reads. It, it's just such a stunning number that 30 million <laughs> license plates are, are red um, you know, and, and it's about to go more. It's going to be, it sounds like 50 million or something on that order. And I'm trying to understand what that number really is. We have 7,000, say 8,000 residents. So it's, just walk me through how we end up with 30 million or 50 million license plate reads in the town. Well, because it's reading every car that comes through town. And then, you know, because we're paralleled by 101 and the 280, I guess I'm not supposed to say the 280, the 280, um, we have a large amount of cut through traffic. We have a large amount of, you know, now parents, teachers, students, staff, construction, you know, domestic staff. We have a large amount of, which is why traffic is the number one complaint that we deal with in Target. We have a large volume of vehicles coming through town. Yeah, I don't think this, this, this doesn't seem to correlate with the traffic studies we've done though. So are you hitting, like if I, if I leave Ashfield and drive to 
Pete's in Menlo Park. Am I going to be hit several times? Um, Depending on where the cameras are, correct. Yeah. And every time you go, every time you do it, you're going to get hit again. Yeah, and coming back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other questions, Mike? No. That's it. Okay. Diana, do you have any questions to the chief on this? Okay. I have a, I just have a, a couple of questions and a comment. Um, you know, to me, in reading your report, it looks, um, so would you say that the ALPRs are more of a stolen vehicle um, uh, tool to find stolen vehicles rather than, you know, find our burglars? That's, that's just one aspect of the system. And, and you're right on the money there that the majority of the hits that we do have have been stolen vehicles, but also, as I mentioned, in those stolen vehicles are are wanted felons, convicted felons, felons on parole for burglary. So we don't know why they're here. Uh, a second and really more important aspect of the cameras is investigation when you have an attempted murder in Lloyden Park uh, and we're able to go back to the system, identify the suspects. You have the gentleman that became lost. We're able to determine that there's no foul play, but he is lost and use those for that reason. So the stolen vehicles is just one part of it. And believe me, and in, in, in talking with George, no one more than our officers would love to be able to uh, apprehend, identify and apprehend a burglary suspect in town. Yeah. So my other second question is, um, it, right now, um, the um, privately installed cameras represent 50%. Uh, more than 50% of the cameras that are installed. And, um, you know, I'm part of a neighborhood group of that. And you know, our price is going to go up. And do we have a sense of how many of these privately installed uh, residential cameras will renew? Um, I mean, there are some uh, groups that have, you know, six or eight, 10 of them. Uh, and when, when, is, when is that renewal coming up? That's a good question. So most of the privately installed cameras were about maybe about six months into the two year lease. So we still have a good time frame to go. Uh, and George and I have talked about this in detail. It could be, you know, at the end of the two year lease, uh, some of the private donors don't have an appetite for it longer or they don't feel they want to support it. I do know that signaling from the group in Lindenwood, <clears throat> Lloyden Park, and one gentleman that lives on the west side of town who's funded the majority of the private cameras mm -hmm they at this time anyway they're signaling that they definitely want to continue uh that funding there have been some comments too uh which makes sense to me from the private funded cameras is that if they feel that they're still being effective they would like to see this is their comments not mine they would like to see the council potentially fund those mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i would think so yes mm -hmm. at some point my third question is do you feel that uh, there has been any uh, invasion of personal privacy uh, due to these ALPRs to our residents. I know there's varied opinions about this. I do not. Um, first off, there is no expectation of privacy when you're on a public road. You do have expectation of privacy in your car. These cameras are merely capturing <clears throat> license plates. There is an exception. As with the elderly lost gentleman, it will capture either body parts or, or maybe a face. And I think, I hope, that we've proven <clears throat> and been diligent in our policy, in the way that we have the information controlled and accessed and through our audit procedure, that we know that this is a very sensitive topic, but we take the security and dissemination of this information just as serious. Okay, um, those are all my questions. I think that it's time to open it up for any public comment or public questions. Or George, sorry, do you want to make a comment? I had one that I, I'd like to ask you. Oh, I sure. Was done. I'm sorry. Apologies. No, and, and Chief, it goes to, by the way, I think a very good use of the camera, which was the the, the, the gentleman you described who, who, I forget how you phrased it, wandered off. But we, we've always talked about this in terms of crime. What kind of constraints are there on your ability to use the cameras for, for other things like that? Um, can you shred that process? Yeah, it has to be an official use. So it can't be just someone coming in and think that, you know, I, my wife has a boyfriend and I want to track this or I want to track that. It has to be specifically related to a crime, an official investigation, an official request from another agency. And as, as I've described in the past, we track that with a case number in the case. And there has to be a justification 
in the internal self audit system as to why the person is inquiring on this plate, what case number is it related to. So when we do our audits, we can go back on every single access point and find out that it's exactly related to this case, which was an approved investigation or an approved use. Now, if we were to find improper use, um, most likely the person who did that would be terminated. Of course, it'd be due process. That's just how serious that the system is at this process. Yeah, I'm sorry, Chief. My, my question is slightly different, which is, in this case, there was no case, right? It was a, it was a, a, a the story I heard you say, it was a gentleman who, who just kind of wandered off and his wife, family was concerned about his health and safety, right? It, it is a case because they've report, they've called the police and reported that my husband is lost. He may have been kidnapped. And so we have to open oh, okay. the investigation into this. Okay. Anything else? Take George. Uh, George. No. Just to clarify the uh, the cost of the cameras, uh, Councilmember Degolia, back in May of 2020, they were the original 16 cameras were 2,000 each for $32,000 annually. Annually. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Okay. Thank you. It was kind of a typo there. Okay. Let's open it up to any member of the public who may have a question or comment about the ALPR report. I see Mr. Polito is the only member of the public still here. I uh, know nope, John's here, uh, Anthony. John's still here? Okay. Yeah, a question. Oh, and he does have his hand raised, thank you. John, I don't see him. John, here. oh, there you are. Hi there. <laughs> Hi. You want me or you want Polito? What do you want? <laughs> La I want you. Oh, okay. Uh, Chief, interesting information. You mentioned that there were either are or were about to be installed four cameras pointing in e each direction on the two sides of El Camino Real. That's correct. When you, when a car comes through driving within the law at the speed limit, not swerving, not doing anything wrong, but the license plate indicates an expired registration or a stolen car. What do you get it? Uh, it doesn't detect uh, expired registration. It only detects plates that are in the FBI system nationwide that are wanted for a variety of reasons. Stolen vehicle, the vehicle's been involved in a, some felony crime somewhere. Uh, it's on Ambler Alert or Silver Alert, a lost or kidnapped person or elder. Uh, it's only hitting or terrorist watch list. It's only hitting on those high level uh, of crimes. What's your response, uh, Chief? Well, and then our response to that is if we're able to, uh, officers start moving in the direction when they become, when they get behind the car, they call the plate into dispatch to confirm, yes, in fact, this is the car that hit and they start getting the general information about the hit. And then they stop the car, conduct what we call a felony stop, uh, get the person out, take him into custody, and then do our normal investigations to see what, what actually is going on. Okay. Does that Thank answer you. your question, John? Yes, it does. All right. Okay. No member of the other public? Any other public member? Bob? Okay. So we have no action to take on this. This is just a receive report and file. Good information. Do I have a consensus to uh, push our item number seven to another council meeting? So moved. And I've got a second from Vice Mayor. Do we need a motion? A, 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 um, a vote. A voice vote? Anthony? No, I, I'll just move that. That's fine. Uh, George is just going to take control at this point. All right, George, you got control. Mona, how are we doing so far? Okay. Great. Yes. To adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> so we can uh, do a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Yes. Thank you, Councilmember Widmer and everyone. So nice to see everyone's face and good to be back with you. It's September. All right. See you in two weeks. See you in two weeks, if not before. Bye, Diana. Bye, hey. Bye Robert Avani. Bye, everybody. Bob Polito. You should. Really I'm here. I was here for. He the, was here for number seven. I was here for number seven. <laughs>